yeah so uh, i uh, did my engineering uh, uh, in 2015 from a college in bangalore or uh, right. then started working with the saas based startup in bangalore uh, and i wasn't really in a good position i didn't want to go through passage i didn't want to i i wanted to uh, start with the easier kill and it was a very last minute call i had almost selected yeah. football cons all apart then i decided no yeah. i'll go with this wasn't really comfortable in the beginning but once the process started and today i feel uh, most comfortable with cr in fact right. during the last few mocks uh, i i hardly got any question wrong. started one thing with rc that really helped me uh, is i think I, i don't know where did i get this from i think from the master comprehension wala part and then a right. few of the webinars that when you read rc we read as if you know it is I think it's happening. Okay. A warm welcome to everyone watching this video. We are here with another successful student. His name is Lalit and Lalit has been a phenomenal student throughout his journey. He's a wonderful professional as well and now he's finally achieved his dream score of a 720 and and he is absolutely ecstatic about it and I once again welcome each one of you warmly to this success interview where we will dive into lalit's gmat journey we'll also understand certain decisions that worked for him and certain that didn't we'll also speak about a few downs and also a lot of ups his journey did end up on a high but there were a lot of stumbling blocks it took him a lot of effort a lot of dedication to go beyond those stumbling blocks and here he is as one of our successful students welcome to this interview lalit and thank you so much for doing this how are you doing thank you durov uh, excited about this conversation same here same here uh, so lalit uh, before we get into your journey uh, just help our viewers understand a bit about your background your academics your professional background whatever you believe is relevant yeah so uh, i uh, did my engineering uh, uh, in 2015 from a college in bangalore or uh, right. then started working with the saas based startup in bangalore uh, and i have been working there since uh, the startup got acquired started working in a public company uh, so okay. that has been my professional uh, career so far just one job do different a uh, background but it has been the the same joined as an intern and now right yeah. oh wow that's that's such a lovely journey i think right you joined joined I mean, as an intern yes, yes, yes. right that was a wonderful I'm sure a lot of people yeah yeah go ahead it was a wonderful opportunity the internship that i got uh, in a startup back then we didn't even know what's a startup now it's a <laughs> fancy thing but yeah then i didn't understand <laughs> but it worked out well so yeah right right i'm sure a lot of people would come to you and be a little surprised like i am a little bit right now because you don't see a lot of people staying in one organization for such a long time because 2015 16 if you say it started with 15 7 years 15, 15 right 15. so it's 8 years right that's a long time in today's times i believe what what made you stay there two things uh first is uh it it always gave me what i wanted you you right. switch jobs for reasons right it could be absolutely your growth it could be monetary expects everything it right, right. that wasn't the case with me i was uh, happy with on both fronts uh, and a second thing i i think generally uh, my personality i mean personally i don't believe in fomo i don't you know get a lot of fomo right. that i should right. change because all of my colleagues have changed that doesn't work right. for me. if i'm liking it i'm liking it so that That's has true. been the generic attitude so yeah these two things you right i'm sure i'm glad that i asked this question because uh, a lot of us in today's generation usually 
live in this FOMO and uh, it's important to look at what suits you. If something works for you, that's Absolutely. all that matters. It, it has right? always worked for me and I'm, I've always liked it. So there was no reason Absolutely. for me to, you know, make those switches. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so Lalit, as you just mentioned that you've been in this one organization for good seven, eight years, yeah. very happy, satisfied with your own growth. Yes. Uh, your expectations are being met. So, how did you stumble upon the idea to take the GMAT? And I'm assuming that you plan to do your MBA. So, yeah. mm -hmm. how did you stumble upon these two ideas? First an MBA and then GMAT as the medium to do MBA. Got it. I think the initial uh, thought was uh, a result of a lot of conversations with, with, with my colleagues at Auto Ninja, the company I used to work at right. the startup. And uh, those conversations sort of uh, put the idea in my head, ki, okay, MBA is something that adds value, especially to people right. who are in the business side of things. Absolutely. And uh, from there, it started building up. Uh, I wanted to do MBA earlier, but there were things that were of uh, more priority. And right. I, uh, once I was, you know, sort of free with uh, other things, I decided that I this is the time I should go for an MBA. So mm -hmm. that that was about it. The initial idea was from the conversations with founders, seniors in in the company, right. and I got to know how an MBA adds a lot of uh, value, value, a lot of perspective. Right. Yeah, you see things differently. Sure, sure, makes sense. And and uh, there are different ways of uh, getting into an MBA institute. You have different types of tests. Why GMAT? What what made you feel that this was something that you could do well on? So uh, I don't know, Malab, uh If this qualifies as a uh, as a as a good enough reason, but uh, sure. I, uh, so this is my first competitive exam that I wrote. Before this, okay. I had uh, you know not done anything. Malab, I, I I didn't target something particularly. Right. Uh, maybe because of. Uh, immaturity or I wasn't really active, you know, I really didn't have, didn't have a goal uh, to say. Maybe that, yeah. yeah. But once you start working, you meet a lot of people, you also become a, become thought smarter, right? You start right. thinking about things. So I sort of decided that if I go for an MBA, I would want to, you know, go through the right channel. I would hmm. send for a competitive exam. I would try to crack it. Right. And I'll try the best I'll I'll try to get into the best I can. So that right. was thought, and that's how the GMAT uh, thing came up. Sure, sure. Uh, so now let us just uh, decode your pre eGMAT journey, right? Because I am aware about your eGMAT journey because yeah. I was there with you right through. Uh, of course, we'll discuss about that because the people don't know about it. But the pre eGMAT journey is also very important because it is important for the uh, the beginners. Right. Okay, to understand how to choose the right course. Uh, so for you, I'm sure you had certain expectations. Probably you saw that EG Matt ticked all those boxes, and that's how you ended up getting uh, you know yourself enrolled with us. So what did you do uh, at your end to research about the GMAT exam? If you were preparing on your own before joining EG Matt, and I'm sure you would have. This serves a lot about different test prep companies and how did you end up with EG Mike? Just take us through that little journey. Yeah. So I think the initial idea uh, was given by my friends who had done this and or, right. or who were in the process of uh, getting the GMAT done. Right. Uh, before before actually getting the course, I, I started uh, browsing internet and uh, right. figuring out, uh, came across uh, GMAT Club and right. and uh, other online resources. I also ordered uh, the official books, books you get right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, started uh, preparing on my own. Uh, but because right. because I, uh, I I hadn't done anything of the sort earlier, I, I couldn't really connect with uh, with with a lot of things, a lot of material that was available on internet. And I realized that okay, I need a structured process because I'm new to this 
uh, and that's where uh, i started uh, talking to my friends around about uh, the different options available and right. the uh, most uh, frequent suggestion was about eg mat okay so so that's where that's where i decided uh, that's when i decided that i'll i'll go with eg mat so 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 uh, mostly uh, recommended by friends who had done this so that's how okay. i signed up with eg mat right what are certain things that you were looking for specifically that you that you then later realize that you could get those things at eg mat uh actually i'm telling you, i i was i i was new to the entire process so i didn't have a lot of you know a pre structured oh, okay. thoughts in my head right. so i was open to uh hmm. everything i i i right. didn't have a structure in place ki okay i want this and that i i was open right. because i had no idea so i was blank before Some, i started writing right. yeah right. so sometimes being a clean slate always helps yes yes right. i i think it helped yeah yeah that's great that's great uh so when you're preparing on your own also what was it that did not work that made you think that okay it's better that i get some help uh i i couldn't uh, so i started with cr uh, okay and i couldn't really you know connect with a lot of things after every uh, uh, question i would question yeah this doesn't make sense or maybe i'm not getting it i would mark uh, let's say a and it was the least marked option right things like that so i couldn't really connect with anything i i Uh, and at that point i realized ki okay i am not good at this right now so right. I, i should i i need help so that's where a lot of okay. things changed yeah right so uh, when you when you were enrolled with eg mat hmm. uh, you were at a 670 overall eg mat score your starting ability uh, this and, and and after that i believe uh, to break this up your quant was always good because you come from an engineering background right. you were at a q49 but your verbal was something that needed a lot of help you were starting at a b32 yeah right you ended and up scoring your b40 you are not so confident b32 it just happened okay huh. so so you will believe that probably your starting ability in verbal was maybe a couple of points yes, low yes. probably b30 yes. maybe ha uh, true true ability was true ability two points lower than okay so let's consider this to be a v30 yeah. right and from a v30 to a v40 a massive 10 point improvement this is a massive feat this was a journey in itself so of course we at dg mad recommend certain things a certain way to follow the process what process did you follow how did you start your verbal journey let's speak about sentence correction and master comprehension so with with eg mat right once yeah with with eg and for eg mat uh i think i mean i'll i'll first uh, speak uh, overall uh, overall yeah, work and then we'll go into the yeah, yeah, yeah. details sure overall uh, one thing that i really like and and generally i like is uh, developing that understanding you know that uh, the concept you should know the concept you should know the details the question mm. will come later figuring out things will come later but you should know what is the uh, how 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 do i put it uh, what is the crux what That's are you going to do yeah what what are you going to do why 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 do they test you for cr what is a cr right. so that uh, that approach uh, was the uh, first component that excited me okay okay i am going to learn something i am i'm not going to uh, learn answering questions i am going to learn a skill true and from there on i i i built on this one principle that okay first understand the basics and even if i'm getting incorrect answers it's fine i'm i'm just yeah. learning question by question so so mm-hmm. that has been the overall uh, overall uh, sort of principle around the verbal yeah. part uh, now uh, we we can go Uh, so this uh, this was the overall uh, right. work approach yeah something that i would like to highlight here that you wonderfully put uh 
I think our attitude and our approach towards uh, improvement, I think, is 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 a wonderful thing to have because uh, look to improve or to develop a skill, you need patience. Yep. Right. Second, you need to allow yourself to make mistakes because the objective is not to master the skill right from the word go. Yes. The objective is to learn how do you get things wrong. So that you don't do things, don't don't commit those mistakes again. And how do you improve and get things more and more correct? And right. that is a process that uh, takes time. It's a gradual. It's a gradual yes. process. मतलब absolutely. And and uh, I think I think this attitude of yours uh, was a key component. I believe right now when we are talking about this, that actually helped you uh, go from a V thirty kind of an ability to a massive V forty. Uh, kudos to you on that. Let's dive into master comprehension in SC. You just mentioned that you know that basics laying a strong foundation was the key. How did master comprehension help? How did the SC process help? And apart from the SC process that EG might recommend, the meaning based approach, I'm sure there must be something else that you would have realized at your own end that helped you get even better at SC. Three questions. I'm sorry, but no these problem. are all connected. Yeah. Uh, with with I'll start with the SC part. Go uh, ahead. I think with SC I did not do anything differently. It was only okay. the meaning based approach. For Fair the right. for the first, if I could say for the first half of the preparation, I wasn't really uh, I though I really liked the meaning based approach. I wasn't really able to apply it uh, while answering questions. and what i realized ki okay this is where i am going wrong meaning based yeah. approach was the only thing that i did mm. so if, with 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 sc it was nothing else just just the meaning based approach obviously the the nuances of the grammar the, the certain there are certain rules uh, right. in addition to those rules it was just the meaning based approach just understand the uh, the statement or the sentence mm. or the a question well and then moving on to the answers has right. has really worked for me right so ha so, go ahead you no no so that this was this was about the sc okay were you, were you always comfortable with english grammar since your school days or you had developed when, it gradually so one realization i had when i started preparing uh, for eg mat was that all my mails everything that i have written or spoken in english was not right incorrect so i wasn't oh, really okay. uh, yeah i had the i thought i was right but mm. when i started studying uh, i i realized i was wrong at a lot of places right and sometimes the simple things were also you know a uh, sort of revelation for me ki okay mm. I, i was wrong here yeah, yeah so english wasn't a uh, wasn't really a strong idea for me strong idea thanks thanks for pointing that out because uh when we onboard students uh we conduct these onboarding sessions on thursday right, right? 7:30 pm indian standard time so when we onboard students we always speak about the method of in immersion like right? to immerse yourself into learning into the learning process Right. And when we talk about immersion, we do speak about this that immersion has to be of two types. One is on the platform. Hmm. Second is outside the platform. Right. Outside the platform example is something that you just gave. That you realize that whenever you were sending emails across, and when you you must be doing this with your friends, with your right. colleagues, right. you would have realized okay, this is not right. Right. And I'm sure that you would have put in efforts to make sure that you use the right sentence structure. right grammar even while talking to your friends or colleagues exactly this is called the method of the process of immersion right outside the platform which is as important as it is to be immersed in the learning on the platform so thank you for for highlighting that now, okay uh, just adding to this point i had uh, after ahead. preparing uh, for some time i had started right. reading emails for meaning ambiguity as well that okay. wasn't something that Uh, you you right. won't do uh, normally, so yeah. 
your overall approach towards language changed i believe yeah, i uh, in my mind i was clear about one thing that even if i don't crack it i am not exaggerating yes. that even if i don't crack it i have learned something that was Absolutely. my uh, my uh, piece right. from the process here right uh you said i i think like a few minutes back you mentioned that while doing cr you found it interesting because your approach overall towards the entire learning was that i'm learning a new skill and if you ask me i also align on this thought because i believe that cr logical reasoning logical thinking critical thinking is certainly a skill which helps you across all walks of life right how good were you always with reasoning or was reasoning also kind of a a, a revelation that you know you were not maybe that great and now you had to become good at it right so uh, in engineering or in job there is some some sort of reasoning but that reasoning is mostly around numbers business projects data processes excellence so that sort of reasoning i was comfortable with uh cr is also about a lot of nuances something some, sometimes they will just tweak a word and the entire mm. uh, meaning will go in a different direction right so uh, with cr i wasn't really comfortable in the beginning but once the process started and today i feel uh, most comfortable with cr in fact right. during the last few mocks uh, i i hardly got any question wrong uh, with cr right so cr cr actually became my uh, strongest area right so were you and were you which was uh, definitely uh, which was go definitely ahead. an improvement i wasn't just saying right. cr in the initial phase of the preparation yeah right 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 so what i was asking is uh, so for sc like you followed the recommended process diligently i'm sure you were doing it do you know the pre thinking process for cr as well anything additional apart from the breathing process that you found was helping you rethinking plus strong elimination process i elimination. i uh, yeah uh, choice elimination i i became really good with uh, process of elimination right. so those things uh, together worked uh, greatly for me right Okay, can you just elaborate a bit on process of elimination so that I would, students I would want to get show you something idea. if I, I I would want to show you something if I find it. Just give me a please. minute. Sure, please. So around POE, right? We are yeah. discussing POE. So I I yeah. I, I I started this approach. With i would just make a grid a b c d e and then questions and uh, the the writing on that pad correct wrong wrong question mark that i'm not sure about this option right. eliminating uh, the easiest ones putting right. a question mark against the ones where i'm a little little uh, dicey uh, dicey and then eventually it, it it sort of just became uh, a really good process for me and in fact this right. is uh, one thing that i did throughout and i couldn't do in the real exam is it yes why very silly very silly reason uh, i i don't know if i should even say that but go ahead i'll i'll i'll, I'll try uh, so you get a you get a uh, a pad a, a laminated pad and then you get a pen so the the uh, admin there he asked me that i shouldn't uh, keep the pen open for long okay. i should always keep it uh, capped and right. I, i didn't do that and when my verbal started so i would always make that grid and then go on solving right. and that pen stopped working and i couldn't make that grid the oh. first minute just uh, uh, went through this i'm trying but the pen wasn't just working and i just couldn't follow that and that's where i think uh, my first attempt i couldn't Uh, really uh, do justice to okay. my approach the approach that i had been this was the first for, attempt when this, this was the 670 all attempt okay yeah so i i was These small things 
uh, it was a very small thing no, people wouldn't even believe but ha uh, it, it happened right right the, the whole idea of this interview is to give out whatever you believe worked for you and whatever you believe went wrong because right. these are small things and i'm very sure now a few viewers few students will make sure that when they go to their exam center they keep the pen cap yeah right so there are small things that matter it, and, it, uh, and it was a very important part of my own process which right. went wrong okay Fine. so so you weren't able to make the grade at all Achha, okay, okay I, i have one very important question yeah how much time would it take for you to make that grade for every question every no, cr I'll, question i'll make it in one go i'll so make that grade ha huh. no i i don't start before i make that grade i make that grade then i start so okay. i'll have it prepared yeah ah okay 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 got it got it, got it. so you prepare one grid for all the cr questions in advance ha huh. all the cr matlab for everything wherever for everything. i think, okay, i need a poe i would use okay. that that's something interesting that's a good take away i'm sure okay so cr ended up becoming your most comfortable zone your battlefield i am or uh, today i am extremely comfortable with cr yeah wow. good to know that uh was reading always a hobby lalit never never <laughs> how did rc excellence happen then i i started one thing with rc that really helped me uh, is i think I, i don't know where did i get this from i think from the master comprehension wala part and then a right. few of the webinars that when you read rc we read as if you know it is of your interest immerse yourself into the passage and i started doing that it was very difficult in the in the in the beginning but then you know, i started connecting dots because when you solve uh, just say for example if a passage is about arts and literature or some mm. freedom revolution somewhere the first yeah. few passages you will find really tough to comprehend but once you have developed that pattern that trend then even though art and literature wala passages become a, you you become a little familiar with the theme familiar yes yeah. and uh, that helped me hmm. so, i i would immerse myself in the in the passage and whatever comes out of it right we go with it yeah so Any that's a specific how strategy that you were using for rc because uh we usually advise that one should finish the entire rc passage within 7 minutes 3 to 4 minutes of reading and comprehending same. and then 1 minute per question same same ha right once you have uh, devoted significant time into reading then the solving the question wala part becomes easier you, you don't you don't uh, put a lot of time there you put a lot of time right. most of the time in reading the passage understanding making a visual a picture in your brain and then it becomes right. a little easier yeah so that that has been the rc's strategy visualization is what yeah, you are talking you should, about right should be able to relate with the passage once you relate with the passage uh, it becomes a right. lot easier than anything were you reading any other books or any other articles in in your leisure time to just get a little accustomed only just rc passages just rc passages i asked you for a few extra rc passages remember right uh, on the google form right so that that has been the only source i solved a couple of rcs i think from gmat club uh, there okay. is a, the official ones once right. i had exhausted all the e gmat rcs i started uh, figuring out official rcs from gmat club so that 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 has been the only source right so uh this v32 or v40 i am sure seems like an achievement you would be pretty proud of yourself yeah yeah when i was making that uh, what do you call it error log right so i i named it v40 is the target and it happened oh did you yeah yeah i i, I have it i wow. but ha huh. can you can you elaborate a bit more about error log because you just mentioned it how did error log help you and how anything that you did to make filling it easier my error log it, it wasn't just the error log it was a uh, a planner 
plus error log uh, where i would only uh, note points uh, where i was wrong so let's say i did did right. a mistake got a got an idiom wrong or uh, maybe i couldn't really see the parallel structure right i couldn't realize this was a problem of parallelism so those points i would uh, uh, note on a sheet and then right. uh, I, i kept revising uh, uh, that uh, error log right i, I just didn't right. want to repeat the mistakes that were committed once so so that was i think i think error log saves a lot of time also during the revision yeah yeah it 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 becomes the only source of revision because it's not possible to go through every question once again again and again right it's always better to have the error log in uh, especially during the last few days especially during the last few yes. days time is of essence mm, true That. makes sense right uh so v30 v40 super journey let's speak about your area of strength engineers all my engineering students are usually very confident about their quant abilities so were you and lalit you were doing really well you did go from a week q49 to a q51 on the mocks yeah so i'm sure there would be a bit of uh, you know that you know this is my strength i don't need to go through everything but you still did so any reasons for that uh one is obviously i i didn't devote as much time uh to verbal as i did to uh, uh to quant as i did to quant. verbal uh always knew that i'll be able to you know manage a 50 in in my brain i was uh, confident about it and i didn't really wanna go for a 51 because i wanted to invest the time in verbal a verbal was one right. thing that i was targeting uh so so one thing is definitely a lack from my side uh, and right. second thing that went wrong uh, in the uh, 720 wala attempt uh, was that 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 day i wasn't uh, in in my best uh, uh, position health wise i i had a right. super headache the entire morning uh, in fact till the time i was uh, till the time i was going to start the uh uh, uh my assembly uh, time i wasn't really sure about it I, i was of the opinion that maybe i should just reschedule it schedule it or should postpone it i wasn't really feeling well uh generally i would start with verbal and then uh, would go for a uh, quant but that day because i was having a headache i realized that i will not be able to go through passages and you know i would not be able to follow my process and quant is straight forward if you get it you get it if you don't get it you don't yeah. get it so i started with quant so that could be a minor reason as well i wasn't in in my best state of mind so maybe i uh, I, i couldn't uh, aggressively do it i i let go few questions where i wasn't really feeling comfortable so yeah but when i look right. look back at it now i i think i should have uh, been more uh, careful about quant yeah, i was not taking it lightly because the q50 was on the cards you were doing it regularly yeah, yeah. and anyway, we'll come to the 720 attempt but before that came a huge stumbling block so this is for all the viewers there so lalit was lalit uh, was doing after he finished verbal i got him enrolled into the last mile push because uh, we had we had discussed about Quant being his friend, so I assume that he is now in the last mile, even though he had the entire quant course to finish. But he was doing it fabulously smoothly. The cementing process for verbal was smooth, for quant was smooth. We entered the test readiness phase, even that was like pushed aside comfortably by Lalit. We entered the mock stage. Lalit was scoring seven thirties and seven fifties for fun, right? and the both of us were like so confident when he was going for the test i was like this guy is going to you know crack the gmat apart and he's going to score a 750 minimum and probably a 760 770 when he wrote back to me he wrote back to me saying that he scored a 670 both of us in utter disbelief both of us in you know uh, a state of shock Tell it what went wrong because 
from a 750 to a 670. This was where you started from. What yeah. happened? That things didn't go right. I think two things. Uh, first is that it was uh, my first ever attempt for a competitive exam. I I did right. not know before that attempt. Uh, I didn't know what stress looks like, what the real time pressure. I, I, I wasn't aware of these things because I never uh, wrote any exam. Everything right. was just, I mean, I, I, I don't even know why did I uh, go for those exams. IIT, right. e, I, I don't even know. Triple a. I just went there, spent three hours and, you know, uh, came out. So this was a very, uh, this was the first experience. I did not know that how these things also matter. How you maintain your calm, composure, how do you follow what you have been preparing for in those three hours? Yes. All of these things were extremely new to me. I, and, and as I told you, I couldn't really follow my approach. Whatever I had been doing for those three months of preparation, I, mm. I, I did follow a, even a single uh, takeaway from the preparation. Everything even for quant? Blank. Three months of preparation. Whatever I had learned, whatever my approach. Even for quant? I think so. I can't. I, I don't remember because I studied with verbal. Okay. By the time verbal finished, I knew, I I knew that uh, this is yeah, a this lot. Is, of this is gone. I finished. Yeah, I finished my verbal fifteen minutes earlier in 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 forty five minutes, and okay. at that moment I knew that okay, gone. And and the last question was a very simple question. The, maybe it was on the lines. The catch. The catch is moving. So, something. Well, it, it was a very simple is an R wala question. So I knew okay, okay, this is a lost opportunity. Because you figured out that it was an easy question and if you could easy question in the last and block. I'm, yeah, and I'm finishing in 45 minutes. So I have definitely messed up something uh, in between. True. So that's where it went wrong. And also the pen incident that you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I, I couldn't really follow everything. Everything just went for a toss. It, it was a very small thing. I could have asked for a, for another pen. I could have just raised my hand and said, Buy me, give me a new pen. Give me, change, change my seat. Or, I had or, that question actually, but I thought probably uh, that would have wasted a lot of time and would probably would have created some disturbance. It didn't even thing. come across the idea. And I, I just gave up to the incident and, and so that's why that's why i'm saying i i, I uh, was new to this world of you know taking exams yeah. see, that's where uh, it went wrong lalit do you believe that this incident of a 670 on the test after the highs of 750s on the mock yeah do you think that this one incident actually laid the foundation for a 720 because it gave you the experience and it made you mentally stronger. That's what I believe. Many, uh, because it was a very simple thing you could have done. Yeah. Ask for a pen, but maybe you were mentally so weak and it didn't strike you. Right. And then, and then in the 720 attempt, you changed your sequence. Right. I don't recommend this to any student, even now. But you know what? Sometimes your instinct has to take over. You have to look at the situation at that moment and then take the decision. So correct me if I'm wrong here, Lalit. Your decision of going with quant in, in that headache and in that not that physically right. fit moment was probably that quant has always been my strength. I need to be fresh for the verbal part yes. and I need momentum. Yes. If I don't have to struggle for quant, let me begin with it. If quant goes well, things may fall in fall in place. Was right. that the logic? Yeah, yeah. I, I knew even if I perform uh, poorly on quant, it will not go lower than a 49. 49. That, that was my uh, approach. And I wasn't really in a good position. I didn't want to go through passages. I didn't want to... I, I wanted to uh, start with the easier kill. And Your comfort that, that was a very last minute call. I had almost selected yeah. verbal quant well apart, then I decided no, yeah. I'll go with this. Instinct. Yeah. You know, more than instinct, I would like to term it as 
presence of mind you, you can say it yeah yeah it, it worked yeah because i tell a lot of my students that you know when you are scoring so well in the mocks that is not the battle won a lot of things of course depend one you you mentioned about it following the process on the final day all that you've been doing for four or five months following it in those three hours that is one thing that matters your belief self belief but the third and the most important thing that you know makes all the difference is your decision making on that one day yes right because in sports also you practice a lot in the practice sessions but when you go on the field there would be something that the opponent would have planned for you that True. you wouldn't have practiced for or you wouldn't have thought about your presence of mind at that particular moment oh okay so this is out of syllabus let me tweak my approach a little bit right that creates a, that makes you a successful sportsman and i think that's exactly what you did so how did it feel when the 720 popped up uh i think i i solved the con part uh, by right. verbal i was feeling good i i i had recovered okay. from the headache and i was you know ready to uh, take on a verbal right. and i remember uh, i remember a uh, few questions in between where i followed the approach that i had been preparing for okay and and it, in between i knew ki, okay this time i'm going right i i had to eliminate certain choices uh, based on meaning uh, approach where right. grammar wasn't really the issue meaning was the real issue and in those few moments i knew okay, okay this time i have a real chance right. i kept on solving questions and in the in the last i knew i'm getting you know really good questions mm. and the time management was also just perfect i i i finished you know in the the right time i think i had only 5 right. or 10 seconds left so right. i had started getting this idea uh, but when the score came i was like okay so i, I and I'll, i'll tell you how how did i know this when i was doing okay. work i sort of got confident about it and i messed up by ir and awa because i i couldn't control my excitement <laughs> excitement uh, i just wanted to get up with <laughs> ir skip few questions right. awa wrote matlab it wasn't my best attempt at ir and awa mm-hmm. i was so excited I, i i sort of knew okay okay this time it's going to be good i've done it yeah but right. then when the final score appeared i was relieved i i, I felt okay and uh, and not not only totally because of 720 uh, 720 it's obviously a good thing and I, i'm happy about it but it is my first ever victory when it comes to academic terms and at this, yeah yeah I, i haven't done well academically <laughs> any time so that was a uh, that uh, will i think help me a lot absolutely that's my personal take away from the entire process you okay after doing so much after you know 8 years of working i tried something and it eventually worked you know this is not just a take away for for you lalit this is a take away for everybody watching this part right now because many people believe that to ace the gmat you need to be intelligent and smart right. and once again during the onboarding we tell students intelligence and your smartness accounts to just 30% of what is required to ace the gmat the right. other 70% is your diligence and lalit scored 100 on 100 when it comes to diligence and because of that diligence i had offered to get him enrolled into my last mile push cohort and even over there he was diligence he was diligent throughout would always do what is recommended would always keep checking in that you know what this is where i'm stuck would never take shortcuts would take the time that is supposed to be taken uh lalit for me was an epitome of how a diligent student should be and that's why i was extremely saddened when he said that he scored a 670 because he didn't deserve that and i remember on the second attempt when he scored a 720 he gave me a call and i felt really special 
I felt that okay, probably I had played my part because of which Lalit thought that Dhruv deserves to know that he scored a 720. So thanks for doing that, Lalit. That made me feel really special. That made me feel motivated to help no, no, I, I, I the think, other students as well. I think for the second attempt, though, uh, the time from first to second attempt, you have been really uh, supportive. And uh, I had all the reasons to not do this call. I could have made any excuse, anything, because I am, I, I just, you know, don't want to uh, get into the limelight and all of that. But I wanted to do this for you because you have been uh, uh, really supportive. And so that's when I decided, no, I will take this call. I will also, you know, I will not make any excuses because I, I <laughs> that's a natural instinct that, you know, let's just wow. stay away. Thanks, that's, man. That's really kind of you, man. That's really kind of you. You deserve all the happiness. I've seen your journey from close quarters. If somebody who deserved this more than you was you yourself. And I was, uh, when, when you told me about the 720, more than excitement for me, it was more of uh, thanking God, more of a relief that somebody who deserved it truly got what he deserved. And that is that was success for me. So congratulations thank on you. that. And once again, thank you so much for doing this because you have no idea how helpful this is going to be for all those beginners, for all those people who have started the journey and are demotivated. Your journey is going to be an epitome of inspiration, motivation, and hard work. Right? So, thank you so much for doing this in general. So, with this, we end this session. Keep waiting and keep looking out for some more success interviews that come your way because every student who comes here teaches us 100 different things that make us a different individual and a good individual as well. Thank you so much, Dalit. I Thanks. will see you soon. Yep.